In the town of Silent Hill, there are many stories of people motivated by selfish desires. One of these stories is that of Michael Kaufman, the director of medical staff at Akemia Hospital. It's his decisions and collaborations with organizations beyond his understanding for the sake of money that would ultimately play a vital role in the events of the game. This video will only cover details in the original Silent Hill, and from devs talking about the original Silent Hill, not any information from any sequels or alternative media sources. So with no more delay, let's get right into the story of Michael Kaufman. <laughs> The story of Kaufman begins a fair bit before the events of the game, and follows with the evolution of the town itself, as at some point in the distant past, Silent Hill was just a small town that was relatively undeveloped, dominated by strange practices. However, a modernization effort underwent as it became a more popular tourist destination. This modernization effort resulted in the town shunning its past strange practices, casting them to the sidelines. These two factors, being the growth of the town and the fall of its past practices, would motivate an alliance between two people who, in a way, represented those ideals. Dahlia Gesheppi, someone who wanted to save the past practices, and Kaufman, a man who wished to profit off the newfound growth. Dahlia recognized Kaufman's desire for greed and presented him a way to make even more money off the visitors to the town, in exchange for his loyalty to her objectives. This method was the sale of a hallucinogen called PTV. PTV was a drug created from a local plant called White Claudia. White Claudia is a perennial herb found near water around Silent Hill, and in ancient times was used for religious ceremonies, found in the old strange practices of the town. They would use its hallucinogenic seeds to create the desired results, and the strange herb was connected to the cult and Dahlia in many ways. This presented a way for Dahlia to give something to Kaufman to make money off of their alliance. It was likely how the beginning of the PTV drug trade in Silent Hill began, as Kaufman and his associates, including Norman Young, sold the drug to tourists for money, as well as several residents to bribe them into his or Dahlia's doing, with Dahlia using the drug to force Lisa Garland into helping her for her plans. However, the risks regarding the drug trade would only increase as the scale and intensity of the police chase continued to pressure Kaufman and those who supported him. Ultimately, Norman, one of his associates, would back out of supporting Kaufman and would flee the city before the events of the game. Kaufman would have no such luck, for while he was rich with wealth and power from the drug trade, he was ultimately unprepared for Dahlia's plans that he had supported. As when Dahlia achieved her objective of reuniting the souls of her daughter, and the fog world would open during the events of the game, Kaufman found himself powerless against the beasts that he had unleashed. And it is here that we find him first during the events of the game. Kaufman is ultimately in disbelief at the results of Dahlia's plan, and is shocked at the monstrosities present in the fog world. We see him sitting in the examination room with a gun in his hands, having just shot down one of the airstreamers, which lies dead before him. Harry attempts to communicate, however, Kaufman is very apprehensive, even firing off a warning shot. And before long, he heads out, seemingly resolving that the course of actions that he must take is to stop the course of events that are currently occurring. We find him again inside Annie's bar in the resort area. This is a required side quest in order to get the good ending, as finding him here, we see him being attacked by a mumbler. It is only with our help that he survives. Kaufman thanks us for helping him, however, he resolves to keep pressing onward to try and resolve the problem gripping the town. But before exiting, he accidentally leaves behind a key to a motel and a receipt with a combination on it. It is with these little items that Harry is able to enter room number three and the motel's rear entrance. In the motel, Harry learns more about the PTV drugs, and a diary entry he finds reads, Took package, told to sit on in a while, don't want to get involved but can't disobey. He's probably linked to the death of the mayor and others. This diary entry from the, in the motel seems to be from Norman, and reveals that Kaufman's influence pressured his subordinates to stay loyal out of fear, not really out of respect. Harry goes to Kaufman's room and uses a magnet to retrieve a key that lets him open a fuel tank in a motorcycle found in the motel. It is inside this fuel tank that Harry finds a vial of Aglophotus, 
a liquid of sorts that can be used to expel the parasites of Silent Hill from the bodies of those who the parasites are within. Kaufman returns just as Harry retrieves this and scolds Harry for interfering before taking the vial and leaving. Following this, we don't see Kaufman again till the very end of the game. For as we confront Dahlia in a lesson in nowhere, Kaufman returns, shooting Dahlia and demanding that she make everything normal again, infuriated that she used him for her plans. He then takes his bottle of Aglophotis from his pocket and throws it at Alyssa. This causes the final boss of the good ending, Incubus, to be expelled from her body. Incubus is an interesting topic in his own regard, but essentially is the demon that was being cultivated within Alyssa's nightmares. Following the boss fight, Kaufman reawakens and sees the portal Alyssa has created for Harry to escape. He tries to follow after him, but Lisa Garland emerges from the ground and latches onto Kaufman, dragging him back as he streams, pulling them back both into an unforeseen pit. Ultimately, it seems as though Kaufman's ultimate fate was to be trapped within the hell that is nowhere forever, a retaliation for the sins he committed in life, being dealt by a person who suffered from his actions. Really, a fair ending for a horrible person. To get a bit more info, we can look at a dev Q&A regarding the game and see some answers that were given about Kaufman and his associates. The dev states the following in regards to a question about what sort of partnership Dahlia and Kaufman had. Dahlia and Kaufman were connected by the trade of white Claudia used to make the drug PTV. In the game, the white powder in the safe at the general store is PTV. The cult has used white Claudia, the raw material for the drug, during its rituals since ancient times. In short, despite the fact that the religious cult to which Dahlia belongs to is a secret society, they have come to possess the sort of structure and organizational capabilities that allow them to manufacture narcotics beyond the reach of police surveillance. White Claudia, which is refined into the extremely powerful drug PTV, is transferred out of the cult and sold chiefly to tourists by Kaufman. In return, Kaufman carries out illegal medical dealing, such as phony autopsy reports, and diverting pharmaceuticals into illegal channels. And then, ever since the fire seven years ago, magic through the power of the malevolent god and the matter of nursing the burned Alyssa became bargaining points. Kaufman's desire, the scope of which illustrates his worldly self-interest, was the profit yielded by the drug. Coffin is a realist by nature who does not believe in things like spells and black magic, but he accepted the responsibility of caring for Alyssa so that the white quality exchange would continue to take place in his favor. However, being a first-hand witness to the deaths of the mayor and the narcotics officer, both of which were brought by, about by the means of magic drawn from the embryonic malevolent god's power, it seems he came to the decision that if the magic was something he could use, he would take advantage of it. Incidentally, the mysterious deaths of the development group that Lisa mentions during her conversation with Harry is a kind of urban legend, so whether or not that sort of thing actually happened is uncertain. But with that, I've now covered everything to do with Michael Kaufman. I intend on slowly covering the lore of Silent Hill over the next couple of weeks, as it's an amazing game and I greatly enjoy it. So feel free to subscribe if you'd like to see more, or comment if you have any specific suggestions regarding things you'd like me to cover regarding the game. So with that, this has been Christopher Beast, and I hope to see you all, well, next time.